Yeah, so let's do some math. Let's say that through your open house work, you have a minimum of two closable transactions. You're working on three. Maybe they're buyers. They're hopefully buyers that have listings to sell, which you will sell. But the open house generated, that's the point. So when you do two deals per month times your average commission, what does that equal? Let's just keep the math easy. Let's say your average net commission is $5,000. Many of you, that has doubled year over year through no fault of your own, perhaps. <laughs> okay, but let's just say that it's five grand per month and you do two transactions as a result of your open house spoke. So that's 10000 a month just from doing open houses correctly and efficiently. That's 120000 a year. Even if your numbers are half of that open house, math makes a lot of sense. So, and for some of you, it's it's actually three times that number, right? Well, the average sale price in the United States right now is three hundred and fifty grand. So, if you're selling one house, and let's say you're smart, and you're with the XP Realty, and you're yep. on an eighty twenty split, you're. I mean, I can do the math for you. Maybe I can't you're do. Keeping can you do it in your 10, head? Maybe. Let, well, let's let's just assume, let's, let's just do some out. math. Three hundred fifty thousand using the average for the country. Three fifty. You know, yeah, don't say the commission part because who knows. Uh, so. 8400. 8, okay. Yeah. So let's say you did two of these per month as a result of your open houses, that's 168 times 12 months. That is a potential of $201,600. So in other words, we might say ignoring the possibility of open houses, you're saying, "No, no, you keep your $201,000. I'm not going to mess around with that. I've I just like dabbling." And again, just to be clear, and Julie touched on this, we're not telling you to shun buyers. But really, at the end of the day, buyers are an act in futility in many of your markets because the buyer market is so – it's not even competitive. It's something else. So if you have a choice and you know all of you have a limited amount of time to spend towards lead generation every day, spend it focused on working on sellers because most of the sellers that you create will op- often equal three different transactions. You'll get the listing. You'll probably sell the listing yourself. Um, then the seller is probably going to buy something or you'll get a listing. You're going to get a buyer off that listing that ends up buying something else. And then that maybe that uh, seller you have will buy something else. Whereas a buyer, you get one transaction. Maybe. Maybe. And, right. Maybe. And that's the reason that we want you to focus. And this all goes back to uh, one of the Harris rules that's in our book on Amazon and you know Barnes & Noble or everywhere else. There's no such thing at the end of the day as a truly uh, – as a buyer that has to buy. They don't exist. There are no such things as buyers that have to buy. And let me give you a, just a juxtaposition to that. There are examples of sellers that have to sell. And there's lots of sellers that have to sell. Relocation, can't afford two homes, inherited the house, tax problems, income problems, can't afford the property taxes. It's a who knows, who knows it list of endless reasons why sellers actually have to sell. And so on the buyer side, you give me an example of a buyer that has to buy. Some of you are going to say, well, 1031 tax exchange. Well, that's not really true because the buyer can always pay the taxes on the house that they're selling and they don't have to buy something else. And in a market like this, buyers are easily getting frustrated and they're making themselves tenants again or they're staying put and not selling their houses. So the moral of the story with what I'm trying to tell you is there's no such thing as a buyer that has to buy. But there's dozens and dozens of examples of sellers that have to sell. So if you have a choice between working with a seller that has to sell and a buyer that can always just change their mind if the wind just slightly changes direction. Why would you spend your time working with the buyers, right? So that, and especially when there's a dearth of inventory or a lack of inventory like there is now. So you got to think like with a business mind, that way you can make business decisions and that way you can actually help people and make money. That's right. So let's say that you are actually already doing really well in your business. You can add 